So yeah, I'm Hillis Dufney. I'm with the Indian Health Service in Warm Springs. Uh, the CEO, been there about a year now, a little over a year. November of uh, 19, I, I joined the team. And uh, it's uh, kind of been a, a quick um, introduction to a lot of folks, uh, especially on the emergency management team and uh, the tribal council. Uh, a lot of the tribal programs that we interact with and so it's been good that way but at the same time dealing with the pandemic has been um, certainly uh, an experience that uh, I wouldn't uh, really uh, want anybody to have to go through uh, but at the same time I think uh, my team uh, and the Warm Springs community has responded well uh, to what need needed or needs to be done to keep the community safe. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. And I'm Jeff Absalon. I'm the Chief Physician Executive for St. Charles Health System. And uh, I'm just really glad to be here with you all today and looking forward to a conversation with Hillis and you all to, to talk about uh, the pandemic and anything else that you guys would like to talk about. So Great. just thank you for having me. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised that we would be faced by new challenges because in healthcare we see new things evolve over time, but the impact this pandemic has had has been dramatic. And I think in almost every way of how we do business and every way of life that has been impacted in one way or another by the pandemic. So we've seen a lot of, a lot of change and uh, we've been working to overcome a lot of challenges during this period of time. And it's, it, at the same time, this has been an amazing time where people have come together and worked really hard to care for all of our communities, um, Warm Springs as well as all of our communities in Central Oregon. And uh, it's been a really amazing time where people have really stepped up, learned, have had to figure out how to, how to change and adapt. And um, so it's been a really, really challenging but important year. A year ago, um, uh, as, as I had, uh, you know, recently um, come to the Warm Springs community, uh, it was uh, March 15th, we stood up incident command in response to the pandemic. And uh, IHS being a federal facility, um, we take a lot of our guidance and direction from the Portland area. There's 12 uh, areas within the Indian Health Service. Uh, Portland being one of them. And so uh, when we stood up uh, Incident Command, or prior to uh, setting up Incident Command, uh, there was a lot of uh, work and discussion about, you know, doing our primary care expansion and uh, so the normal work of uh, what we are trying to accomplish down in Warm Springs to improve uh, the health system. And uh, as the pandemic developed, uh, of course, it changed everything. Uh, our Operation went from uh, a lot of in-person visits to uh, doing a lot of telephonic visits. Uh, a lot of the patients that did come to the facility and continue to come to the facility uh, will uh, be screened um, outside uh, prior to coming into the building to make sure that anybody who has any respiratory types of symptoms get screened and tested for COVID. Uh, so, so we're doing a lot of things that are just different than what would be outside of our normal operation. And uh, our team has really responded very well. And I think in partnership with uh, uh, not just the tribe, because, uh, you know, the health center is uh, primary care is federal. And then we've got community and public health uh, that is tribal. The social services programs are tribal. Uh, the folks really came together as a team. Uh, the Tribal Council asked us to put together a COVID response team uh, of which they asked me to take the lead on and so we started meeting daily really to uh, you know address what was going on. We've since cut our uh, meeting time down to uh, two meetings a week and then we're briefing the Tribal Council twice a week on Monday and Fridays and so uh, those meetings all went very well. 
Um, there's been some really great collaboration. We've got one of the St. Charles ICS uh, team members coming down to join our ICS uh, team meetings once a week. And so uh, anytime we've had need of something, uh, the offer has always been made uh, if it's available in the St. Charles system. So that's been really great. And we really appreciate that. Uh, the state has been absolutely uh, great to work with. Um, we've uh, asked for supplies. We've been able to get supplies. We've asked for equipment. We've been able to get equipment. Uh, both on the um, federal and the state level and then we've also worked in collaboration with St. Charles to get some equipment as well. So it's just been a really great uh, collaboration and uh, the cooperation since I've been here has just been outstanding, especially around our uh, response to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, a lot of work in terms of contact tracing. Um, we, we had some challenges early on in the pandemic, in particular with our testing. Uh, we were really limited in terms of testing supplies. Um, and so that was a challenge that unfortunately we lived with for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Fortunately now, and for the last several months, we've had a very good supply of material to do testing. So that's a really important part of the whole contact tracing process. and in containing this, uh, this virus and the pandemic. So um, we have, of course, throughout the region been providing sites to do testing, and we've partnered with our local counties um, in terms of doing the contact tracing work. We have our own contact tracing team that works within St. Charles facilities so that if there's an exposure or suspected exposure, the team can engage and follow up with that. And that's something that we take very seriously because Obviously, um, and particularly early in this pandemic, there were lots of concerns about the wellness of our caregivers, working in an environment where people were coming into our facilities with the virus, sick, and, um, and as you may recall, uh, there were lots of concerns about adequate supply of personal protective equipment. So this is something that's been really important to us and wanting to maintain and protect um, both the patients and families that we serve, as well as our own caregivers. So, so we have been um, following up and, and tracing on all, all risks. Um, but I, I do have to say also, I, I know that in the region and thinking about um, Warm Springs as well as our counties, uh, there's been a lot of work to try to help contain via contact tracing and other community efforts um, to encourage people, of course, to um, make changes that are not always fun or welcomed, but certainly necessary to control this pandemic. And, and I would say for the region, I think we've really done a good job. And that's not to say that there hasn't been a very significant impact as there has been everywhere in the world. Um, but I'm, I'm really proud of the work that people have done locally to, to work to protect themselves and others and uh, contact tracing and all of these uh, social adjustments, as difficult as they are, I think are all part of that. You know, when, when I think about the contact tracing pieces in, in Warm Springs, uh, uh, Katie Russell is our public health uh, uh, director and uh, she and her team took the lead on uh, making sure that all of our pa positive cases um, uh, were uh, able to get isolated, make sure that uh, they had the, the food and shelter that was required. In partnership with uh, Jefferson County, we even needed to uh, bring some of our folks up here uh, for housing just to uh, make sure that they had a safe place to uh, get them out of uh, the home, so to speak, because in Warm Springs, we have such um, uh, housing shortage that a lot of families have uh, a lot of folks living in a single home and so trying to deal with things like that which are somewhat unique um, in, in our community uh, that team just did an outstanding job and continued to do an outstanding job and then on the uh, contact tracing for all of the contacts IHS works with those individuals to reach out once we know uh, who they are um, and uh, 
we, we uh, help them get into a quarantine situation and also provide all of the wraparound support. Danny Martinez uh, and his team uh, with food and water and uh, uh, neighborhood impact has been a big part of that process. It's just been amazing uh, collaboration to make sure that the community members are getting what they need. Um, so, you know, just a huge shout out, not just to, uh, you know, the community health, public health side of the uh, things, but my staff, um, yeah, having uh, to work outside uh, hot weather last year, uh, smoke um, outside, having to deal with, with, with the smoke, there were at least a week there where uh, we had the worst air quality in the world. And so my staff had to work outside and some of that, and I'm sure others did as well. But just amazing, you know, the commitment and uh, the willingness to do what it takes just to make sure that our community is getting uh, the support that they need. Uh, testing wise, you know, we started testing early as soon as we could. Uh, we received an Abbott machine and uh, started doing some, some testing early on. Our first positive case, actually uh, this week was the anniversary of that first positive case in Warm Springs. And uh, so we just slowly were able to build up to, uh, you know, having a really good structure in place for testing. We now have the Abbott, the Binex, and the Cepheid available to us to be able to test the community. And uh, our community-wide surveillance continues, you know, to this day. Uh, we're doing probably in the neighborhood of 35 to 45 tests each day in the community and uh, the uh, tribe has been really good to get their entities to, you know, come send, send, you know, their staff in for surveillance and so we just, you know, continue to work on that and if it wasn't for the state sent us an Abbott test so, you know, I mean, there was collaboration there. Um, of course, the federal side, you know, I mean, we've got, uh, you know, funding to purchase and, and bring additional uh, equipment and uh, supplies in to support our needs and so it really has been great. The uh, you know collaboration um, uh, all the way around you know uh, both from people who really don't know Warren Springs that well but donations coming from Portland area from uh, some of the surrounding communities. Uh, I know there was a group of ladies that get together and sew up masks and they donated to the community so we've had a lot of collaboration with just surrounding community members and organizations to support what has uh, really been a great response in Warm Springs to this pandemic. And I'm, I'm happy to answer the question too. Yeah. I really appreciate the question about our, our staff and our caregivers um, because here in Madras and throughout St. Charles, we have amazing people that are part of an incredible team and everybody's here to help and take care of our communities. Um, and so um, I, I think that I, I couldn't say enough about how appreciative we are, how proud we are of our staff. Um, this has been a year that's been fraught with uh, fear, you know, a lot of unknown. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, concerns about adequate personal protective equipment early on. Um, and our staff uh, just throughout have just stepped up. And I mean that from our frontline clinical staff throughout every arm of the organization. Everybody that supports the work that's done in St. Charles, from the cleaning staff to the dietary staff to anybody behind the scenes that might not, not be seen by the public, but all are contributing as a part of a team. So our, our, our team's been incredible and um, been very devoted and we are so appreciative of the work that they do. And, and I, I'll take this opportunity too to just say that on behalf of our staff, it is so much our privilege to be able to take care of the people in our community, to be, be able to take care of you all and um, members of the Warm Springs tribes and your families. It's absolutely our privilege. And um, I know that on behalf of all the people that work for us, um, this, is, this is why we're in healthcare. We want to help people and um, just couldn't be prouder of our staff at this time with the challenges they've faced, how they've um, looked into the eye of the storm and uh, just continued to move forward to the benefit of all around us.
I know that as the vaccine started to arrive in December, there was a there was a quite a bit of excitement about um, the possibility of having a vaccine to help people and protect people and save lives. Um, that certainly was fraught with some frustration about not getting as much vaccine early on as we wanted. Um, we were very interested, of course, in protecting our caregivers, uh, which, which really was the first group to be getting vaccines. And we did a lot of work in partnership to um, vaccinate first responders in the area. So not just St. Charles Health System employees that are, that are here taking care of people on the front lines, but our, our partners in the EMS agencies, um, police, fire, et cetera. And so that was really important. So I, I have to say, um, very exciting. Um, certainly understanding that there was only so much supply um, and yet we had to manage uh, a really high demand for the vaccine which was really inviting and important for us to see. Uh, we did find, we, we tipped up a team to initiate our vaccinations and initially we were doing our caregiver vaccinations in Bend and um, that has since evolved significantly and uh, of course we've been working uh, with the counties in the region to do the mass vaccination clinic in Redmond at the fairgrounds. And so that's been a really important effort. And of course, this is far beyond our caregivers at this point in time. We were so excited to be able to really be the first region in the state um, in terms of the counties in order to vaccinate um, our older populations. And this has been a full-fledged effort throughout. And so, I understand, and I'm sure Hillis can talk about this, that you guys have been incredibly successful on the Warm Springs to be congratulated for. And uh, would just encourage people um, that haven't yet had the opportunity to get the vaccine to please make yourself available to it. Um, these vaccines are amazing. Um, they, uh, they are very effective. They are quite safe. And they are saving lives as we speak. And I, I can say that because even though we are seeing a resurgence of numbers in terms of patients that are in the hospital at this point in time, um, we're also seeing that the people that are hospitalized with COVID-19 now are younger than what they were before. And in the sequence of vaccines, the older people were vaccinated first. And so we take that as information to say that vaccinations have been protecting many of our older folks. And now as the younger populations are, are becoming more vaccinated, we expect that they too will be protected, um, but we've seen an impact on the vaccines and uh, the virus is still here. It will be here for a while. And so everybody really needs to be protected. And so that means get a vaccine if you're able to get it and continue to wear your mask, wash your hands and keep your physical distance. And we understand all the sacrifices associated with that, but it is all so, so important. I mean, I, you know, I mean, so agree with uh, all of that that was said, you know, in Warm Springs, uh, December 22nd, we received our first vaccine um, in collaboration and the uh, relationships that were forged both, uh, you know, through Indian Health Service. And that's how we in the community decided that we would receive our vaccine. And, and I think that was a smart choice because because of the structure that you had uh, mentioned early on, Sue, uh, that um, we were able to get vaccine timely. It didn't come as quickly as uh, anybody had hoped, obviously, uh, but as some of the logistical things had gotten uh, resolved, uh, we started to see a steady flow of vaccine coming to us. Uh, so December 22nd, we received our first doses and we were vaccinating that same day. And uh, we continued to do so with uh, several larger shipments that we re requested and received for some community events. Um, today, we were sitting at, uh, you know, over 4,000 doses administered in Warm Springs and uh, roughly 50% of our community members, our user population has been vaccinated, which is a tremendous job. Uh, you know, I really commend uh, Dr. Locker, who uh, has been kind of our lead point on all of this through Incident Command. She's our operations chief. Um, she works in conjunction with the rest of the, uh, the planning, logistics, uh, uh, finance team, uh, safety, uh, uh, all of our uh, public uh, information that gets out there. And uh, that team really worked hard uh, over this past year, just making sure that uh, we're communicating, we're uh, working with the community, 
uh, where we can to make sure and identify uh, where our priorities are at and uh, really work hard to uh, take care of uh, the population. And so in Warm Springs right now, um, having uh, a 50%, roughly 50% vaccination rate, that's outstanding. And uh, we have a ways to go because uh, we all know that that herd immunity number is closer to 80%. And so that's what we would really like to convey to the community is, is that this is not done. We really need uh, the community members that have not yet been vaccinated to come out and get vaccinated. Uh, because it's, uh, it's really not about the individual, it's about the community. And uh, vaccinations are uh, a protection, uh, not just for an individual, but they protect our community. And so uh, we really want to encourage individuals to get out and get vaccinated.